machines. So I thought I would do a video just to kind of talk a little bit about some of the very frequent problems that people have with using CPAP. And one thing that's really super great about CPAP is that um, even though most people do experience some problems, especially when they first start their CPAP, uh, they can be overcome, these problems. And once the problems are overcome, the CPAP is so wonderful. People love their CPAP. They won't even leave home without it. Now, before we get started, I want to mention something we're doing. We're about to give away a free SoClean. And this is a SoClean machine for anyone that's using CPAP to one of our uh, first 1,000 subscribers. We're going to ship this so clean anywhere in the contiguous United States of America at no charge, no charge for the so clean. And uh, so, so go ahead and subscribe to the video and uh, good luck on winning that. So what I want to talk about is, you know, just over time, um, I'm here with my two co-workers. Uh, we got Mr. Max right here and we got John Michael, our customer service guy. And uh, they're here with me to kind of just, we're going to in front of you right here actually kind of do a little brainstorming about what people have problems with when they're using their, their CPAP machine. We're going to go over 10 of the problems, so we'll make the video not be too terribly long, but uh, let's start with, with, with one. John Michael, give me a problem that people have with CPAP. Um, I can't use my CPAP because I can't stand mask on my face. Oh yeah, I've heard that one. Thank you, John Michael. He said, I can't use my CPAP because I can't stand to have that mask on my face. So CPAP masks come in a couple of different shapes and sizes. One is this huge mask over your nose and mouth. Then there's a mask that's over just your nose. Uh, but for people who feel claustrophobic, um, I usually suggest a mask called the Swift FX. It actually is super light. It's just, you know, a tiny little bit on your face. It has these little nasal pillows that just barely seat around the edge of your nose. It's reasonably comfortable. I'm not gonna say it's totally comfortable. It does take a little getting used to, but uh, what I found that people who do feel claustrophobic with the CPAP mask on, almost always the uh, Swift FX is a huge solution for them. Um, give me another one, Max. What do you What do you have to say? When I use my CPAP, I wake up with an extremely dry mouth, and I'm told I still snore even when I use my CPAP. Oh, okay. So when I have a customer call me and say. Uh, whenever I use my CPAP, I often wake up with a dry mouth and uh, you know, I use my CPAP all night and I still feel like I didn't really get any benefit. Well, probably what's happening there is you may need a chin strap and uh, that would be a strap, just a simple piece of cloth that after the mask is on, you put a chin, a chin strap under, it keeps your mouth closed. So if your mouth is coming open while you're using CPAP, that is unless you use a full face mask, if your mouth's coming open with just the nasal apparatus, then, um, then what's happening is all of that pressure that we need in your airway to keep your airway open is just going in your nose and out your mouth. There's no pressure in the airway. You're probably still having apnea. And with all that flow of air, it dries your mouth out. So that is, that's a good one, Max, thanks. Got another one, John Michael? Yes, having water droplets in my CPAP mask. Oh yeah, having water droplets in my CPAP mask. That one I've heard a lot. What happens with the water droplets in the CPAP mask is where the the, the CPAP machine is going to have a heated humidifier attached, attached to it and it's creating humidity for your nose so it's just more comfortable. Unfortunately, with all of that humidity, um, what can happen is you actually will have a difference in the temperature inside of the, the long CPAP tube versus the temperature in the room. And if the temperature difference is too great, then that humidity just forms water droplets in, in the CPAP uh, tubing and it can end up going all the way to your nose. It's extremely irritating. The solution for that is, is that you should have a climate line on your CPAP machine. That adjusts the temperature inside of the tubing to sort of match what's in the room and you're still getting plenty of humidity. So a climate line is a great solution when, uh, when that's the problem. You have another one, Max? Sure do. When I sleep with CPAP, I wake with my belly bloating, pain, and lots of gas. I just can't do it. Sleeping with CPAP, your belly bloats, got a lot of pain and, and gas. So yeah, I've got that call a few times. Usually what's happening here is, you know, your, your trachea, which is where your airway is, and then there's the esophagus, which is, you know, your, your food tube. Um, they're all kind of connected. 
And if air is going into the esophagus throughout the night, then you're gonna have belly bloating and a lot of pain and, and gas. So we don't want the CPAP air to actually go into the esophagus. It's only designed to go into your, your airway and into your lungs your air, your, uh, to keep your airway open. So the solution when that's happening is usually one that would be answered by your physician because chances are that your pressure is either too high or your pressure may be too low. It may be an adjustment that they need to make um, on the on the machine to uh, kind of compensate for that. It also could be just that you have the wrong mask. Maybe you, you might need to change to a different CPAP mask, um, but it's best on that one to actually go and talk to your doctor. All right, do we have another one? What, which one are we on now, John Michael? CPAP equipment is too bulky and cumbersome to pack. Oh yeah. CPAP equipment's too bulky and cumbersome. You know, today's world, we're always on the go. We're going here, going there. So a lot of people, um, you know, you should use your CPAP with all hours of sleep. And so therefore, you know, if you're going to go on an overnight trip or you're going to go on a weekend away or a week, you know, vacation, etc. Um, ideally, you would pack up that whole CPAP conglomeration and carry it with you. If you're going on a cruise or going on a flight. Um, you know, now we have small CPAP machines. Um, they are even as small as the palm of your hand, um, weighing only one pound. So that is a, a, a solution, an option for you to just purchase a, a portable CPAP machine um, from AffinityHM.com. What else you got, Max? I can't use my CPAP because every time I wake up and look in the mirror, I see those awful lines in my face that the CPAP mask and headgear leave. These lines stay on my face all day. No way. Yeah, yeah. You, you show up to work and somebody says, hey, what, what are these lines all over your face, you know? And, and it makes us feel self-conscious. Self um, if you have lines on your face um, after using CPAP, I believe that probably the size of the mask is wrong. You have to pull it down too tight. Um, so it's probably a sizing issue that's the problem. And uh, you know, some people do have very sensitive skin, so sometimes there's gonna be some little red marks that should go away after a little while anyway. But, um, but I, I would say check with your provider, find out if maybe a different size is better, or even a whole different style of CPAP mask might be in play whenever you have these lines on your skin. Next problem, what's the common problem that we're seeing out there, John Michael? The biggest problem ever. They don't have time to clean it. Oh yeah, yeah, people don't have time to clean it. Now, so with CPAP, you know, you got your heated humidifier, you have your hose, you have your mask. Um, this is why we're giving away a so clean. We wanna raise some awareness about what this machine can do. Um, when there is three things, darkness, humidity, and warmth, guess what loves that? Mold and bacteria. Now the SoClean machine is a machine that you can purchase, insurance does not cover it, but you can purchase it through AffinityHM.com and it attaches to your CPAP equipment. We have another video available too that shows you all about it. It attaches to your equipment, it creates ozone, pumps this dry gas ozone through your equipment um, while you're not using it, you know, and it actually kills mold and bacteria. It's a wonderful machine. The SoClean 2 is a wonderful machine and a great solution. Um, if you can't or don't want to purchase a so clean, then make sure you are cleaning that CPAP mask, hose, and water reservoir at least once a week with warm soapy water in the kitchen sink. Rinse it out real thoroughly, let everything air dry. Extremely important um, because you actually can make a problem worse if you're not cleaning your CPAP. I have seen uh, CPAPs come in to our shop here who people haven't cleaned it in a long time and uh, it breaks my heart because I know that you know, you're trying to solve one problem, your sleep apnea, and then you can create a whole new problem with sinus infections, et cetera, bronchitis, et cetera, um, without, you know, keeping that CPAP clean. So it's important to keep it clean. Got another one? I sure do. My mask leaks, the mask doesn't fit well, or it makes my nose sore. The mask leaks, it doesn't fit well, or it makes my nose sore. Help me out, what would you say is the solution for that, John Michael? So you probably need a new one. You need a new mask. Or you need to adjust the straps. Or adjust the straps. Yeah, so, so if your mask is leaking, then it's probably 
back to the other. It's, it's either the size of the mask isn't right or sometimes just the shapes of our faces are a little different. You may have to switch to a whole different style altogether, but it is important that the mask not leak. Now let me just throw out one other little bit of information. All masks have a leak in them on purpose. Usually it's out toward the front of the mask. It's blowing air out. So in the mask itself, there's going to be a place where air or actually carbon dioxide that you are exhaling can get out of the system. It's important for the carbon dioxide to be exhaled from the system, obviously, so you're not rebreathing it. Got any more? Okay, we're getting close to the end. Getting used to the, having the mask on your face. Yeah, just just not being able to acclimate. Yeah, I can't I can't acclimate to CPAP. So yeah, I hear this a lot of times on a brand new setup. People have a CPAP machine. They're really just having trouble getting used to the whole idea of a mask on their face plus the air pressure coming into their airway. Now, a great way to battle that one is to actually just sit in your recliner while you're awake, maybe watch some TV, put the mask on, get yourself used to it before bedtime. You know, put the mask on and try it for a little while. And, uh, you know, the more you get used to it, the easier it's gonna be whenever it's time to actually go to sleep and, and use the CPAP machine. And I think we have just one more problem that we have encountered. What is it? I don't even know if I need a CPAP. I don't even know if I need a CPAP. So the answer there is go to one of our other videos where, or even in the blog, I'll put a link in the uh, directions on this, uh, on this video. Um, if you don't know if you need CPAP or not, there's a wonderful, um, it's called Stop Bang, S-T-O-P-B-A-N-G, and it's a list of questions that will help you sort of screen yourself to know um, whether or not you are a candidate for a sleep study. Um, but I can tell you just right off the top, a couple of them are just feeling really sleepy during, during the day, throughout the day, um, falling asleep very easily. For example, if you fall asleep watching TV, you might be a candidate for a sleep study. Um, if you fall asleep reading a book, you might be a candidate for a sleep study. Um, falling asleep easy. Headaches in the morning are very common. If someone you're sleeping with or someone in the, in the room while you're sleeping has told you that they hear loud snoring, that's a, that's a red flag. It doesn't mean you have sleep apnea, but it is a definitely a red flag. Um, and if anyone with whom you sleep has ever said that they can hear you breathing and then at times you actually stop breathing well that is sleep apnea right there so i'd recommend definitely get in there get you a home sleep study or a sleep study at the the uh the hospital go see your doctor talk to your doctor about it so those are the 10 most common problems i hope this video has been helpful to you and uh so actually go ahead and subscribe you could win a free so clean one of our first 1,000 subscribers is going to win a free SoClean. So uh, thanks for watching. Y'all have a great day. Thanks. Bye.